Right, so our topology is done and our UV maps are done. And now it's time to start texturing this uh, piece of clothing. I'm going to start that by baking out some normal maps and we're going to be using Substance Painter for that. And to be able to bake this properly inside Substance Painter, there are some preparations that we'd have to do in Blender first. So the first thing you'll notice if I show my high resolution mesh, I re-imported this so that it is again separate objects. And I'm just going to combine this shirt over here and this front bit, this one and this one. There we go. Combine that into a single piece. And I'm going to start renaming these. So this is going to be, let's call this vest under, underscore high. And this one's going to be sleeves high. This is buttons high. And here we have collar high. Now for a low resolution mesh, and hide this first, I'm actually going to go and create a different baking mesh to the one that we are going to send into Character Creator. So this is what we're going to send into Character Creator. And I'm going to make a duplicate of this. And just going to hide the original one. And I'm going to split this up into a similar way to how these high resolution meshes are split up. So I'm going to go into edit mode and select one component and and press Control L to link. And I'm going to set this to UVs. And I'm going to separate this out by selection. I'm going to do the same for the other uh, sleeve. There we go. Make sure everything's selected. Okay. And again, separate by selection. And there we go, all separate pieces. And now I'm going to be renaming them in a similar way to how these high resolution meshes are named. So this here, we're going to call this vest uh, low. And these two sleeves, I'm going to combine them into one object and rename them as sleeves low. And this is going to be buttons low and this is going to be color low. Now all we have to do is export these as FBX files. So I'm going to select all of these low resolution meshes. I'm going to file, export, FBX, and let's save that as uh, shirt bake low. And I'm going to change some options here so that I export only selected objects. I don't want to apply the modifiers. And yeah, that's good. Sure, pick low, export FBX. And I'm going to do the same thing for our high resolution meshes. And this is ready to take into Substance Painter for normal map baking. So here in Substance Painter, let's load up our FBX files. So We'll make a new project and select those FBX files that we exported earlier. Where is that? And I'm just going to select the little resolution mesh and press OK. And here it is. I have no interface. There you go. Now to actually bake the files, let's, uh, uh, the normal map, sorry. So let's go into Bake Textures. And I only want the normal map, so I'm going to turn off all these other maps. And I'm going to load in the high resolution mesh here in the high definition meshes. Now for this match setting over here, we want to switch over to bind mesh name. So remember that naming convention that we used, we had underscore high for the high resolution meshes and underscore low for the low resolution meshes. And let's do a test bake with a low map size, set 512, and bake textures. And this actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and bake a higher resolution texture. I'm going to switch over to 4096 and I'm going to add in some anti-aliasing. 
Okay, this looks good, so let's export our normal maps now. I'm gonna go to File, Export Textures. And I'm just gonna select a folder. I'm just gonna make a folder. For our texture size, I'm just gonna select 4096 by 4096. We can shrink that down later again, but it's good to have as high a resolution texture as you can. And there we go, that's done. And if you open our folder, it also saves out all the other channels. We don't really need these, we can just delete these. And here's our normal map. So here are all the retopologized clothes, and we're about ready to bring this into Substance Painter for texture painting. All we need to do now is make sure that each individual piece of clothing will have its own unique materials, and this is how Substance Painter is going to differentiate between the pieces of clothing and not through the names of the actual geometry. So let's take, for example, our shirt. I'm going to assign it a new material, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call this shirt. And you do this for all the pieces of clothing. And I've actually gone ahead and did that for the other pieces of clothing already, like this belt already has its own material. And once you're done, all we have to do now is select everything, and we're going to export an FBX file. And I'm just going to call this, uh, let's call this mesh paint and I'm going to export that out now that's now let's bring that FBX back into Substance Painter I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to select our mesh there we go there it is, and I am also going to load in our uh, normal maps. So I'm going to switch over to this texture tab over here, and I'm just going to drag in all the normal maps that I baked previously. Now as you can see here, we have a bunch of texture sets and these correspond to the materials that we assigned earlier to our individual pieces of clothing. Now to assign the normal maps, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the texture sets and I'm going to drag in the corresponding normal map. In this case we have the bag and we're going to drag in the bag normal maps over here to our texture set settings into our additional maps. And there's the normal maps for the bag. And I'm going to do the same for every other piece of clothing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bake all the other additional maps. So we're just going to go into, into bake textures again. And this time I'm going to turn off normal maps since we already have our normal maps baked out. And the default values usually work for these other maps. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to make the output size uh, really big and I don't think I need the ID maps. If I'm gonna bake ID maps, I'm gonna do it again individually. There we go, all the additional maps have been baked, but that's just for the shirt. We're gonna have to go through each of these texture sets and bake all those additional maps for those two. Again, I'm going to be demonstrating with this shirt. I'm going to load up a tiling fabric texture to serve as the base for the black portion of her shirt. I tried using some of the presets inside Substance Painter, but I found that this texture that I brought in works best. And now I'm also putting it in its own folder. Here I made a new fill layer, and I'm using this as a sort of adjustment layer. 
try out the different layer blending modes to get the effect that you want. Now I'm going to make a black mask on the folder and use the polygon fill tool set to UV mode to fill in entire UV shells. For the sleeves, I'm going to try out some of the presets. The smart materials come with some pre-built effects that you can play around with. This one has edge wearing that uses a curvature map. That's one of the additional maps that we baked in in the previous step. I'm actually going to play around with this preset a bit before I decide that it's not working. And here I switched to a different preset, and that's the one I went with. And now I'm also making a new folder for the buttons. Here you see that I loaded in another file. This one's a black and white texture that I made in Photoshop, and I'm going to use this as a layer mask for the embroidery. Here's the fill layer for the embroidery. And I'm going to make it gold by turning up the metallic value. To use that texture that we loaded in as a layer mask, all I have to do is right click on the folder or layer and choose Add Bitmap Mask. Then choose the file that you loaded in. I'm going to add in some procedural effects for that black part now. I added a new fill layer and gave it a black mask. On the mask I add in a generator. This is the generator I go with, but the effect is too strong so I turn down the settings. I only want a subtle effect for this one. Now I'm going to start adding in some stitches. Substance Painter comes with a procedural stitch alpha, so that one's pretty handy. Here I'm playing around with the spacing, and I also turn on Follow Path. The stitches for now are red, and that's just so I can see them better. If you noticed, I'm not actually painting on the layer, I'm painting on the mask of a fill layer. And that way I can adjust the properties of the stitches later on. There we go, now I'm adjusting the properties of the fill layer to make the stitches look right. And at this point I start manually painting in some slight color variation for the sleeves. Lastly I'm going to go in and paint some detail onto the embroidery. I'm just going to add a new layer and just paint in some height information and nothing else. Here we have our finished textures from Substance Painter, and now we want to export these out. So that's easy enough thing to do, so I'm going to go over here to File, and Export Textures. Or you can just hit Control shift e Now over here I'm going to select a folder. There we go, I'm just going to create a new folder over here. Let's call it Clothes PBR. And we select that folder. And make sure that for your texture sets we have all of these selected. And for the config, I'm just going to switch this over to the default, which is document channels plus normal. And we can export that out. Okay, the export's done. Let's open up that folder and take a look at our textures. 
So here it is. We have our textures exported out. We have our normal maps and a bunch of other textures. But the thing is, these are PBR textures. And if you want to convert them to something that iClone can use, that's an easy enough thing to do. And we're going to do that inside Photoshop. So here we are inside Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how to make a specular map using the PBR maps that we got from Substance Painter. So here we have three of the PBR maps. We have our base color, our roughness, and our metallic. So the first thing that we want to play around with is this roughness map. So with the roughness, the the white portions are actually show high roughness. So this means that this will have a duller specular. And for our specular map, we want the opposite. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control I to invert those colors. So there we go. Now these black parts are going to be duller with the specular. And now the metallic portions are going to be shinier over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this metallic layer to multiply. And I can lower that opacity a bit. Now as you can see, even the black portion of her shirt, the fabric section, I set that to metallic as well because I thought the, because the highlights look better on that one. And with metallic highlights, the colors of the reflections are actually based on the base color. So if we look at this, this is what our base color looks like. So the reflections on the black portion are going to be relatively weak compared to this uh, embroidery part. So let's work on that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a duplicate of this base color. And since the specular map inside Character Creator is actually a specular intensity map, all we're going to need is a black and white map. So I'm just going to hit Control shift u to desaturate this. And I'm going to do a bit of levels on this to something like this. And now what I can do is I'm going to create a new layer mask. I'm going to turn off this base color at the bottom. I'm going to select this layer mask and go to Image, Apply Image. And for a layer, I'm going to select our metallic layer. And there we go. And I'm going to put this over the roughness and turn on that roughness again. I can set this to Screen or Add. I'm just going to set that to add. There we go. And we can play around with the opacity on this. And let's turn on our metallic texture again. And there we go. This is actually something that we can use inside Character Creator now. This is a good enough specular map.